So let's read Esther 5, 6, and 8. Who'd like to read? One of that blue house down there by East Minico years ago. Years ago. And I just said, Lord, if it would please you, and I hope it does, <laughs> I would just love to have that house. I prayed that prayer every day for about six years because oh, wow. I drove by it on my way to school. I didn't, we didn't live here at the time. And if it pleases you, Lord, well, guess what? It didn't please him. <laughs> I did not get that house. I was devastated. And then this house opened up. And well, okay. You know, I really wanted that blue house, Lord. <laughs> but okay. So we're looking at the, this house, and I fell in love with it had everything, this back room, I mean, I could just see and picture ministry happening here. And I was so excited. He called Warren one day and he said, Warren, um, you know, I know you guys really like that house, but um, there's another house that's for sale, or it's not for sale, it's coming up for sale. And I really think, you know, you ought to take a look at that one before you make this final decision. And so Warren told us, well, he asked him, well, where is this house? And he says, it's that blue house down at the end of H Street. <laughs> That's my God. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So my heart was, oh, just in the nick of time, God has given me my blue house. And so we went in. I'd never been inside of it. The ceilings were lowered. And there were just teeny tiny little rooms. There wasn't even a place to put my piano. But I kind of felt obligated to buy it, you know? <laughs> well, the Lord said, here it is. Oh, OK. I really didn't want it. I really thought I wanted that one. I really don't. God knew I didn't want that. And he has used that so many times when I haven't gotten what I wanted. Sometimes he doesn't give us what we ask for. And I'm so glad because he knew my heart. He knew what I was imagining in my head. I thought that house looked like this house on the inside. It does on the outside. Actually, it's cuter. But anyway, that's our God. So, if it pleases you, Lord. But he was so good to give me that choice. Who does that? <laughs> Only God. <laughs> so you ask for it. You can, you can choose this if you want. Oh, Lord, I don't. You know what I want. You know my heart. Esther replied, My petition and my request is this. If the king regards me with favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition See, and, she said that again. Mm -hmm. And fulfill my request that the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for them. Then I will answer the king's question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are her plans in action. She is being extremely methodical here in her presentation. And she's, I think she could be actually using, um, a stall tactic too. <laughs> you ever been so afraid that, oh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I kind of wonder if that isn't what's going on with Esther. Say that again. Or she's buttering them up. Come for another piece. Yeah, kind of luring in, dangling the carrot. That could be too. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it could be a little bit of both. So he repeated his offer, I'll give you up to half the kingdom, um, with his proverbial expression again. He seemed to like to say that. Um, so she put it off again for another day, and we don't know why. All right, Esther 5, 9 through 13, let's read that. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, and that he did not stand or tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, 
Haman restrained himself and went home. Moreover, Haman said, Besides, Queen Esther invited no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow I am again invited by her along with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Oh, miserable man. Here he's been invited to this great banquet with the king and queen, and instead of rejoicing over that and being happy over that, what does he do? He sees Mordecai and it ruins his whole day. One little pipsqueak of a man upsets his whole day. He's even been invited back. And he is, yeah, livid is the word. Do we do that? We have so many blessings. And we forget all that's good. And what do we do? We focus on that one thing that's got us hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And it will steal our joy. Mm -hmm. The enemy longs to kill, steal, yes. and destroy. Yeah. We, say that again. It sets us up for failure. Yes, it does. Our mental attitude. We've got to break free of that. We cannot give in to those negative thoughts that drag us down and make us sick. Yeah. That's why I love this time of year because people are starting to talk about what they're thankful for. We need to be thankful in June and July and August just like we're thankful in November. And so that's what he lets happen and it's his deep insecurities. Sometimes maybe we have insecurities and someone says something to us that's just a little bit eh, and it's our own it's our problem more than it is the other person's problem. We say things like you made me feel you made me you make me you make me feel stupid. You make me feel worthless. You make me what are we doing? We're giving those people out there all the power. You make me. No. I think we need to strike those words from our vocabulary. I let you make me feel stupid. I allow it. I receive it. I take it in. I believe it. Stop. We are his beloved. We're the ones that he extended the golden scepter to and said, come, come. And no, we forget all about that. We're invited to his banquet. We have a, a, something to look forward to. Do we think about that? No. We're thinking of that little Mordecai in our life. It's robbing us of all of the abundance that God wants to give us. We are accepted in the beloved. Right? Ephesians 1.6 We are accepted. He changes our name. It says in Revelation, he gives us a new name. We might have been told growing up that we were stupid that we were ugly, that we were fat, that we were, and maybe not growing up, maybe it was a spouse or a friend or a family member. They tell us that we, you are this, you are that. We're not, we're his beloved. He calls us beloved. He's given us a new name. We are not ugly, we are not stupid. We are accepted in the Beloved, and He calls us His Beloved. That's our new name. <laughs> I like to say, I am beloved. 
by the King of Kings. He's called me by a new name. Beloved. Bye. 